All right. Um, I've given you a worksheet. I mean, a note taking thing that has most of the writing you would have to do on it. Um, that way you can listen instead of having to come with everything I say. And I don't have to write as much up here. Um, we're going to talk about different kinds of lighting fixtures and how they differ, what some of their uses are. Um, let's, let's get started. And they are called fixtures or instruments. And these are lights, and the things that go inside them are lamps. And I will show you a lamp for one of these later. Um, these are called cans, and they are almost literally a can with a light stuck in it. And the light looks like, I'm going to take this off so the people out there in TV land can hear me better. Um, well, there we go. The light with these kind of looks. These are not plugged in, by the way. Very much looks like an old automobile headlight. Class, bring that up here for you folks. If you want to see it, you want to pass around and see it. It's just a, just a light. And you also might notice that there's a screen in here. What do you think the screen is in here? It's between the light and out here. It's in front of the light. Or in front of the lamp. Where do these things hang, especially in a black box? Over the stage. Over the stage, over the audience. Sometimes lamps break. They just break. <clears throat> and these are enough, enough glass that they can hurt, cut somebody pretty badly. So this catches the glass. Um, the, the, the light never knows it's there. It just passes on through it. I'm going to leave this one apart. This is just a larger one, and it has a larger headlight in it. And this is really, these are really kind of DJ lighting quality. They're not really theatrical lights. A theatrical can will still put out more light than this one. Um, these were, uh, we inherited these from another school, so I'm not going to complain about how we use them some. But you see there on that back wall, um, folks at home, I will show you these pictures. I'll, I'll get a picture of these for you later. But there on the back wall, that's what this that's that's what this does, and you can put um, you can put a gel in front of it, or a lot of people call it color filters, but it's really the correct term is gel, um, and you can change the color. But that's as bright as it gets compared to. Okay, so those are cans. Yes. Is the color filter called a gel because it's made of gel? They actually, that's a good question, they used to be made of gelatin, nice. like hard gelatin, not like squishy gelatin, but um, gelatin was forced to, and you grind horse hooks down and reconstitute them somehow, and you make a hard, it would look, probably look, I've never seen a real gelatin gel, probably look more like glass, I can't imagine that they were very thin, uh, but now they're made out of a polyester gel. Color, uh, depending on the type of gel, most of them the color goes all the way through it. Some of them the color is just on the surface and just like that. So this is called a PAR. And PAR stands for Parabolic Illuminized Reflector. And it's talking about the shape of the reflector. The lamps that these use. Um, kind of look like a modern car headlight. They're about, in front of the light, they're about, 
total about three inches long, and they're very hot. Um, the gas in them is under pressure, and they um, they get so hot that you can't touch them with your fingers when you install them because the oil from your fingers would cause them to crack. Um, the gas in them is under pressure. Can they explode? Yes, they can. Does it look cool? It looks scary. I've had one plug in wrong somehow. One, I don't know how it happened, but it did. And it popped and it, it startled. It, not much scares me as far as startling me, but it, it makes me jump. But is um, it cool? Yeah, I guess it is cool, but the, the light shattered. It was, it was gone. How do you make it explode on purpose? I didn't do it on purpose. It was very much on accident. Somehow I managed to plug it in the wrong way. And if you, I'll pass around a, one of the plugs in a little while. If you take a look at the plugs, it's almost impossible to plug them in the wrong way, but I wasn't paying attention and got something wrong somehow. Is there a way to make it explode on purpose? Mm, no. Yeah, also, I don't want to because they're about $20 a piece. Oh. So, there's that. Yes? Do you make it explode on purpose? Huh? Do you can adjust the focus on that? You cannot adjust the focus on a car. That's what we're doing. Your hands do not focus. All of this stuff is filled in. Hands do not focus. Cars do not focus. They don't get a hard focus. You can do this. If you watch the wall back there, there's a ring right here that I can turn. And the, the lens has like a grid pattern on it, sort of. I can turn, see how I make it longer, wider. So the shape of the of these is generally ellipsoidal. Um, there are lenses that can be changed out that will make them even round. These lenses change out. I'm not going to change one right now because they're kind of like tiny. Um, but we, uh, it's good, warm. Uh, you, can, you can put a different lens in there that will tighten up the beam and make it round. And uh, we'll get into those later. I'm just, this is kind of just an overview of the different lights so we have the proper terminology to talk. This model, these use a 575 watt bulb. How badly can the light hurt you? Asking for normal reasons. Oh, like your eyes? Like just in general. Oh, if you if you stare into it, yeah, it will hurt your eyes. Don't stare into it. Oh yeah, but like physically injuring you know, oh. with the light. How? Well, like working with the lights, how bad can you? I mean, like just it, like intentionally or unintentionally, how bad can someone be hurt with the light? Oh, the biggest. Two biggest things that happen. <clears throat> Hannah, do you remember? What what are the two big things that happen up on the lighting grid? Can you remember which year it was? Well, any any time, just in general. One of them it usually happens to me. Can you burn yourself? Burn well, that, yeah, I, I don't burn myself very often, but yeah, you can get you can burn yourself. Um, some people wear Gloves. It's recommended that you wear gloves. If you're really careful, you don't have to. Certain parts of the light are a lot hotter, are a lot hotter than other parts of the light. Um, you can handle them out front here, and they're like so warm. very warm. But let's like see. I can put my hands on them. Um, I wouldn't want to keep my hands on here a long, long time because as this light stays on, it's getting hotter. Um, <clears throat> You can generally touch parts around the front and especially around the bottom of the front. In the back, they get really hot. They get so hot, I'll show you on the bottom of this one. Yeah, they have, they get so hot that they have cooling vents. Nice. Back here. Um, so that parabolic aluminized reflector is describing the the shape of the reflector back here. On one of these cool ones, I'll take them. I'll take them. I've got, I have bulbs up here, I'll just show you. 
this one, but there's another here. I got jumped ahead a little bit. So parabolic luminized reflector, bare ellipsoidal. They do focus. Um, uses them. I don't know what uses them. You can really use them for whatever you want to use them uh, for. And depending on the theater, you may use some for different things. Um, but a Fresnel, uh, a Fresnel lens. I know it's written like it's Fresnel, but it's the guy's name that invented it. And I don't know why we don't capitalize it anymore. We don't. Uh, but it's, it's pronounced Fresnel. Um, <clears throat> and it's a special lens design that works like a convex lens, but it distort, distorts less as the lens gets stronger. Convex lenses, if you remember from physical science, are shaped like that. Pointy on the ends, thick in the middle, thin on the edges. I can't do that very well. They're shaped like that, convex lens. To bend the beam more, the lens has to get thicker. Well, there's the thicker and thicker the lens gets, the more difficult it gets to make it out of glass. Um, it's less stable and distortion enters into it and that kind of thing. A Frizzell lens, um, you've probably seen one somewhere. Have you ever seen a lens like on a Houses, things like that. So the lens, if you're looking at it from the front, is like this, and it has, looks like it has these little concentric ridges in it, and then in the middle it kind of gets to looking like a lens again. From the profile of it, if you're looking at it from the side, this is this is the front over here. So it, they kind of go like. like that. So each one of these acts like a little lens. Acts like part of the larger lens and bends the light. And I might have drawn this, I might have drawn the slopes in the right direction, in the wrong direction. It may slip over. But that's a Frizzell. We don't have anything that uses Frizzell lenses. We don't because These two things kind of replace them. Uh, the Frizzell just went, went in a can, more or less. Okay, a Parnell. This is a Parnell. Par, parabolic aluminized reflector. Nell is the last half of Frizzell. Um, it, has, it has elements of both of them. It has the reflector design of this, but the lens the lens will adjust. You can adjust it out bigger, you can adjust it down smaller. Sorry there, I just so you can adjust the lens size. Um, which is handy. It's a lot easier to do than changing out the lenses of these. And the way it works is there are two lenses in there that have a wave-like optical profile made into them. And one of them, I can't remember if it's the front one or the back one, one of them rotates. And when they rotate against each other, it changes the focus. So. Parnells will not focus. They'll always be fuzzy like that. I shouldn't have done that. That was a bad example. I, do you know what I did? I wanted to find what you unplugged it all along. No. Did you catch what I did when I unplugged it? I held it by the cable and pulled on it. 
hold it up. Okay. And they should fit pretty, pretty tightly. If you ever plug in a light and it doesn't like really want to plug in, like some of them almost fall off. We have gotten a tool. We got a tool last year that you can expand these pins. We to, had a tool the whole time. No, we just got it last year. Um, but don't use it unless you've been taught how to use it, unless you've been shown how to use it, because you can mess with these up really fast. Okay, this is an ERS, an ellipsoidal reflector spotlight. Saying ERS isn't nearly as catchy as saying Parnell. Um, but it, it is an ERS. That's usually not what they're called. In the tray, this type of light fixture is called a spot, because it is a spotlight. It's not a follow spot, which is what most people think of as a spot. They're called spots, sometimes for clarification, they might get called a fixed spot. And in England, they're called profiles, because in England, you adjust the profile with a spanner. You don't adjust the spot with a wrench. But that's, um, I'm sorry, I thought I would have that up, up out of everybody's eyes. I do it. Okay, there we go. But you can see that it focuses. Our name for this one, this brand name, this trade name, is um, a Source Board Junior. Big Brother is a source board. This is a source board junior. Our source board juniors have an adjustable zoom. If you look at, that's what I, that was the other thing I meant to put up there. You can watch the, watch the size of the beam. And this is shining a pretty long way um, for our theater anyway. It'll, it'll really spread out there. If you wanted to, you really need to put two up on the grid. It's not very loud, but. You could. Because of the angles and stuff, it's hard to light the whole stage. But a, a regular stage, these will light a bunch. Now, usually the lights are farther away on a regular stage. Um, so you may use a, a bigger fixture because these are more powerful. But this will. This will um, zoom, and it also has a focus on it. See, it got fuzzy without getting too much there. They almost. But the front one's a zoom, the back one's a, or maybe the front one's a focus. No, the front one's a zoom, the back one's a focus. You can also control the beams, the beam on this. These things sticking out on the sides here are shutters. If you push them in, now I'm pushing in the opposite side that I want them from where I want to block because optics, convex lenses flip things around. Um, I can shutter this down and we could cut the light. Or if you look at the back, if you look back there. The light will cut hard at the edge of the stage or at the edge of the set or whatever. You have a lot of control over them. You can, that could be a better focus, but you can make the beam square. <coughs> so that's that. These are our, these are our source for juniors. We just call them juniors. And I just realized I made a minor error. Hello? Hi. Okay. Yes. The theoretic, theoretically, I have. Virtual. 
Yeah, I've never seen it. It would get nothing. Losing one's people is not to be able to play the guitar. It will make some things trickier. Because um, I, I knew a guy that had two fingers that he could play like nobody's business. Um, but now might not be the best time for him to learn. Yeah, because he'll be out of commission for a while with that, and he'll get he'll get. That would that would probably be the best. Not that I mean, believe me, I don't want him to learn to play guitar. And I'm not telling him that he can't right now. It's just that he's going to get so far behind that it's going to be hard and frustrating for him. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. <coughs> um, Um, I wrote Parnell wrong. This is a trademark thing. I really, it's written like this. The first three letters are capitalized. Okay. <clears throat> R should probably be all caps too, but we talk about them a whole lot more than writing. So. This is a source four, and I'm going to show you a few other things. Um, <coughs> sorry again, Isaac. These kind of have a, a handle on the back, and it gets warm, but you can touch them. It's plastic, and you can touch them. I will say, though, if you grab that handle, Oh yeah, there's hot stuff all around. There's hot stuff all <coughs> just like they're right beside each other. You have about an inch and a quarter width of plastic, and then it's hot aluminum. Out of the three years that I've been working with life, the one I burnt myself on the most Because you grabbed the handle. Yeah, and then I grabbed too far and then. So this is this is a source four. It's not a zoom. If we want to change the size of the beam, we have to change the lens to. And I'll show you that in a minute. Right now, this is sort of a medium-sized lens tube. Of the three we have, this is the medium size. We'll get into it's a 26 degree. We'll get into what that means later. Um, but we have 50 degree, 26 degree, and 19 degree. They go smaller than that. And after 19 degrees, the lenses are actually start getting bigger. And the reason you would want a tighter beam is when you get at the back of a really big theater, you want that beam to stay tight and not spread. Because in what this is probably 30 feet or so from here to the wall, you see how much that beam has spread from starting this big around to being 20 feet across. Um, that might be about 40. Yeah, that's about 30 feet. Uh, could you imagine how big this beam would be if it had gone 150 feet? It would be really spread out. And something happens when the beam gets low, when the when the beam angle gets bigger, something happens. We'll, we'll get more into that. We'll talk about it today. But we'll get more into it on a, on another day. Um, I can't show you both at the same time. All things being equal, these lights are much brighter than these lights. Uh, noticeably brighter. <coughs> oh, what was it? These, because they focus, these do focus. I'm not keeping up over here. And ellipsoidal reflector spotlights, they do focus. 
it means they can take a go boat. Those are check marks, not Ds. Um, the things that don't focus can't take a go boat. A go boat is this. This one is just called a donut because when you take it out of here, it just looks like a donut. It's a stainless steel, thin stainless steel ring, basically, with a hole in it. You can get them in different sizes. And now you have, I think, it's not any brighter. If we had a, if we had a uh, light that would zoom down to that small a beam, if it started at this size, and went to that size, it would get brighter as you make the beam tighter. But it doesn't make it any brighter, but it does, it does tighten it up, and they're useful. It's a pretty inexpensive way to get a smaller beam of light. Gobo, by the way, G-O-B-O, -O. write this down somewhere. It took us forever to learn this. I asked a lot of people. I asked a guy that has sold, the, sold lighting, worked in the theater for a long time, and now sells lighting. Well, go with me. He couldn't, he didn't know. It just it had always been called Gobo. Finally found it. Gobo stands for goes before optics. And when this slides into this slot back here, it's going between the lamp and the lens. So it goes before the optics. <clears throat> Show you a few other Gobos. <clears throat> We have a few different patterns, but there's one and can focus it a little more. Yep, let's see. Do we use that one in the average? We use something like that. We had one something like that. We have one that has an arch top on it. I think that's what And we used one in Pippin that's uh, shaped like a Church. Yeah. So there's a window. You have other ones. This one we've never used. I'm not saying we won't, but this would be interesting. Checkerboard. If you and ever do Alice in the Wonderland. Yeah. And then this one, there are a lot of different patterns that are just called breakups. This is called, I think it's a medium breakup. And what does that look like? I don't know. It depends on what color you put on it, doesn't it? If you put green on it, it could kind of imply forest leaves. If you put brownish, orangish brown on it, it would look like autumn leaves, maybe. If you made it. Yeah. If you put um, blue on it, could be water, could be the sky, depending on how what you do with it. And you don't always have to focus things. You get the most light, the greatest concentration of light when you focus. But look, as you break this up, well, but now it could be something else. You know. Grass. It looks like a cloud. It looks like an explosion. Um, so, you know, it, it can, you know, depending on what color you put on. There's a little more subtle thing. Just these get used a lot um, to light floors on uh, in Broadway productions. That's where I've seen them used a bunch. They have really powerful down lights that will project patterns on the floor just to make the floor more interesting uh, so that the people up in the balcony see something besides just a black floor while they're watching the show. It also creates shadows that the characters can move through at some depth. Um, and then so that is a gobo. Cannot use gobos unless the light will focus. I'll reanimate it. 
so I'm shining it in your eye. That's really all of the note taking, that all that will be on the quiz is basically what's on that sheet. Um, what? Do y'all have any questions on what we've done so far? It's pretty simple, it's just stuff you, you just need to be told. Um, <clears throat> What instead of guessing? These are gels. Here, since you were so interested in a gel, you can take that yellow gel and pass it around. This one is a color. We all, our, the gels that we use are a brand called Roscoe Lux. Um, they have both a name and number system. Sometimes it's hard to remember the numbers, it's easier to remember the names. This is O2. It's also, it's the color's been around forever. Um, it's called Bastard Amber. Some people call it Fatherless Amber, but the real name for it is Bastard Amber. That's it. It doesn't look like much, other than it's not that. It's warmer. It gives pretty natural looking skin tones. Um, typically going to be used in a, you know, a straight play or drama. Um, but that's that one. And we, there are lots of we have lots, lots of different colors, and we only have of all of the colors available, we just have a very few. Um, this one is that was O2. This is O4 which is medium amber. This is a true amber. It's orange or looking. What could that imply? Fire. Sunset. Sunset. Or sunrise. Or yeah, the sun changing. Um, and that's about it. A uh, heart. You know, you could, I don't know if the theme, the theme won't really tighten down anymore. Um, but you know, you can apply a campfire, fireplace, sun, whatever. <clears throat> There's a color that I don't I don't have one ready. There's a color called no color pink. And if you notice that light, the light that's shining, it's just a little green. If I shine it down, Isaac, don't look right into it as I shine it down. But look at Isaac's skin. You can look over this way now. Look at Isaac's skin tone versus he looks a little green. He looks a little sick. And shine it on someone with fairer skin. All, all three of you, <laughs> but look at each other, and you'll see you don't you don't really look your best. It's not a really very flattering color of light. No color pink kills that greenish cast. It really doesn't change the color much other than kills that greenish cast. This is called flesh pink, and this makes people look like they bit in the peach. Uh, it's used a lot in musicals because it's pretty. Uh, you know, it's just pretty happy lighting. But see, doesn't everyone look better now? You look at yourself, look at each other. Sorry, sorry about going right in. Going right here. Well, don't, don't, don't stare into it. What color did you say the light was? Green? You know why? Because you had pink light shining in your eyes? And. Yes. And there. Remember the color spectrum? What are the color, seven colors in the color spectrum? Oh, wow. Roy G. Biv? I don't know why it would go in there. I don't know why it would go in there. No, yeah, that was about to go there. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. <clears throat> they just wanted seven. Sorry, I think they wanted seven because of. People cared about 
how many other things there were, and seven is considered a divine number. And so he just added a color. <clears throat> really, um, there is no, really there's no violet. That's just dark pink. Yeah. The violet, well, it, it's ultraviolet is the next color up, but indigo is a really, really deep blue. Um, blue then is what we would call cyan now. Blue, blue would have been what we call indigo now. Roses are red, violets are blue, and blue would have been called cyan, like the sky color of the sky. <clears throat> so anyway, there's just an extra one thrown in there, but we stick with it for whatever. But if you notice, there is no pink in the spectrum. There's no such thing as pink light. There's light with the green taken out of it. That's how you get pink. Take away the pink. Minus green. There are actually some filters called, some gels called minus green. So that one doesn't do much other than make people look good. <clears throat> this is called, well, a color called special lavender. I think it's number 54. It doesn't look like a whole lot there. But there you go. There's the green. Now it's warmer. <clears throat> if we bring it down to here, it does make your skin feel a little better. Because it's a, as far as a lavender goes, it's, it's warm. Yeah, don't look directly into it. Look out at each other and look at your life. Um, and it also, it's kind of a silvery light. It, um, <clears throat> I can't dim it with this. <clears throat> you dim it down and it will imply What, what color of light do we associate with silver? Silver. Oh, by the light of the silvery moon. moon. Yeah. Not the sun, but the moon. Um, yeah, so yeah, moon. Uh, it, it does a pretty good representation of moonlight, especially when you, when you dim it down. So. Um, That's that. I just wanted to introduce those to you. Well, there's all sorts of stuff we can do talking about color. And we'll go over there hopefully sooner than later, especially when we start meeting more regularly. Go over there and set up, have some different colors set up and shine them on people and shine them on different colors and see how they interact. Because when you start dealing with secondary colors, what happens when you change color? on like change the color of light on a color of paint gets really interesting.